What's up, everybody? How's it going? Flames break their little mini skid. Fancy oh, intro. Five. Thank you. I thought that was pretty good. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Afterburner. You're probably wondering who these two dorks on your screen are. <laughs> You're probably wondering, where's Pinder? Where's Rhett? Where's Cammy? Where's Kent? You know, where's all these people? Who are these two dorks? And I have the same question. I don't know what we're doing here. But here we are. Um, we're going to have a little silly goose time tonight. If you don't know who we are, we are Mike and Jordan. You may know us from the In the Dome show, recently acquired by the Nation Network. You've probably never seen our faces before, though. So, yeah, that's who we are. Boomer had that great idea of pixelating us. We might want to go the Daft Punk. It's too late now, though. I oh, guess. yeah, too late now. We should have just gone totally anonymous with, with helmets and all that shit. That would have been great, eh? Amazing. Yeah, that would have been awesome. All right, for our first uh, first afterburner, the Flames actually pull out a win against the LA Kings. Team Tank is on hold. Team Tank on hold. It's the return of the stick flip king, David Rittick. Why I should change? Why I should change? And uh, what the round bat the battle of Chucky versus Doughty is no longer a thing. Is it good? Is it good as shift to possible? The the fans were on Doughty's ass all night. The fans weren't on Doughty's ass early in the game. But they they got into it later, which I appreciated. So, do you remember last the last time I saw the Kings live? I think it was you and I, and uh, it was Chucky tying it up late. That was the that was the game when when Dowdy actually scored in overtime, and on the way off the ice, he told the fans to suck his dick. Yeah, I remember that very. Not well. asshole, hey? What that an great. ass! Yeah, but you are a Dowdy fan. I'm a big Dowdy fan. How no. can you not be? Well, the guy I, he like he just yeah. is a normal dude. He's a great Canadian. I like the guy. So I guess it'll be interesting. We might be able to cheer for him uh, for Team Canada to come up uh, pretty soon. Is he going to make Team Canada? Nah, I've, I doubt it. Greg Millen might think otherwise. He's like, he should win the Norris. I'm like, dude, there's like 45 other defensemen who are way better than Drew Doughty at this point. Yeah, he's getting pretty old balls, eh? I mean, you yeah, he, he looked pretty good tonight, though. And he still got that, like, piss piss and vinegar spirit so i like that yeah he was effective all right so tonight's episode brought to you by oh let's go to the highlight of the night highlight of the night presented by betway get the betway app on your phone bet the responsible way with betway with betway you can get a free bet up to 200 bucks and if your first bet loses you create an account scan the qr code on the screen and redeem your bonus so you can actually get a free bet you can bet up to 200 bucks and if you lose it you get your money back. Place a bet, no minimum amount of required. If the bet loses, you get a refund up to 200 bucks. That's sweet. You can only use this uh, money to bet on your favorites or use it to bet on your favorite sports, only available outside of Ontario. So we should all be good. Imagine going to the casino and with 200 bucks, you're like 200 bucks on black, goes red. And you're like, here's your money back, sir. That's a sweet deal. Very sweet deal. Are you going you to go? You want to go after this? Are you going to jump on board? You're 18, aren't you? I don't look 18, but I, I, I am. Just turned 18 a week ago. Yeah, I just graduated high school. <laughs> All right, let's get into the, uh, the goalie matchup. Wolf versus, or sorry, I wish it was Wolf. Wolf. You're, you're uh, wishful thinking there, bud. Riddick versus Markstrom. We talked about this in our last episode, the Markstrom obsession. I guess when you get the win, it's a little different. He played amazing. Um, probably a big part of tonight's win. You still kind of want to see Wolf in there, don't you? I mean, I do. I'd be. I mean, it's a delicate balance, right? You can't like you can't really kick Markstrom to the curb at this point, can you? Yeah. Is this? Does it seem like they're like splitting one and one game? It kind of seems what they're doing, eh? Yeah, I think you know what. I think we'd we'd kind of like to see the split be more like what, like 80, 20 Wolf, but they're probably going maybe like win and you're in type type deal. And I mean, I don't mind it too much. I'd obviously rather see Wolf, but again, like you still probably want Markstrom to be in a good spot heading. You've already pissed him off once, right? You want to keep pissing this poor guy off. So you got to throw him up on once in a while. And he played great tonight. All right, let's get to this Betway highlight of the night. It's going to be the second goal of the game. Hey, could have been the first goal, but the second goal totally outdid it. Let's take a look at this. I mean, Oh, that was sick. Dude. How much are you loving that line, eh? Loving that line. Let's, um... Oh, we're going to see it again. Here we go. 
Look at that. And Kuzi's hands in tight, man. Like, you, you've seen that the last two games. Obviously, in the St. Louis game, the guy was rolling. But, you know, that's kind of what you heard when he signed with Vancouver. Came over from Russia and signed with Vancouver. It's like, this guy has hands. Like, that was the biggest part of his game. He's got amazing puck skill and just elite high-level skill, especially in tight, especially once he's in the zone. And you've seen that the last two games. And, I mean, it's kind of been his M.O. to, you know, dip his – Give a shit meter has been, you know, here and there. Some games he looks great. Some games you don't even know if he's playing. But man, when you see flashes like that, you're just like, man, there's he's 39 goals last year. Such a dangerous player. You just yeah, see I, a guy like that. And, you know, we got we got him as like a salary cap dump. If you can turn that into something, an asset, or if you can turn that into something to be more competitive quickly, like, dude, like he's a like, fuck, he looked good tonight. Yeah, I remember watching him. Well, pretty much every time he played the, the Canucks last season, he was lighting it up. He had a freaking awesome season last season. And I mean, that's a great play. That's a great. That was a. I think that was a good encapsulation of the game right there. The Flames really, you know, and the Flames have done this a lot. Is the, the effort has never really been in question. That's a really hardworking play by three guys. Well, two yep. guys who have been great all season, and Kuzmenko is kind of like I think adding Kuzmenko to that to those two guys' line, Pospisil and Kadri. That's a nice move by Brian Huska. You know, a guy who's kind of been struggling to get up for games, a guy who's kind of been struggling to find his place in the lineup, put him with two guys who are going to work their bags off every single night and are going to make strong plays in the offensive zone and play physical and give him some room to use his skill. So I think there's a really nice little kind of like shift in the lines that we've all been kind of dying to see. Like, let's see some different line combos. Yeah, that's your bet Betway highlight of the night. If you... uh didn't catch the QR code, go back and watch it afterwards. That sounds like a sweet deal. 200 bucks off on your first bet or 200 bucks guaranteed, essentially. If you don't win, you get your money back. All right, where do you want to go next? Do you want to go to these uh, the change in lineups? Do you want yeah, to I, think, I think that's the most important. To... They were super effective tonight. Um, I think most people, like I said, we've been kind of dying to see a bit of a different look here, right? It's like we yeah. don't need to see Dryden Hunt, the Dryden Hunt experiment. We don't need to see that. Let's mix and match here. That's what the last 10 games, 15 games are about. We got Steinberg tweeting before the game, the new co line combos, D pairings. Like you said, you're in garbage time now. Now's the time to, to fiddle around and try and find some new chemistry for going to the next season. Um, we saw some flashes of this Kuzmenko Kadri possible sign last game. Carries into this game. Let's let's talk about like Kuzmenko and possible are really interesting um, pieces on this team currently. You got after watching the Buffalo game, again, um, Kuzmenko has really sold me. I think this is your highest cap of talent. Like, he's got the most offensive talent on this team. I'm sold. So, if you're looking at how you want to roll out the next season, I don't know. We were chatting about this, you and me. It kind of makes sense. Go all in on, on Kuzmenko. Put him on your top line. Build your top line to suit him. This guy scored, what, 40, 39 goals he last year? 39 last year, yeah. 39 goals last year is a 40 goal scorer. I mean, up till now, you're looking at Sharon Govich, like, okay, this is our obviously our best goal scorer. Sharon Govich is he's got 28 this year. So he's gonna hit 30, but that'll be his career high, whatever he hits this year. Like Kuzmenko got almost 40 goals last year. And seeing what we've seen the last two games, I know the talking point for him has been consistency, but I think you want to build your top line around Kuzmenko. You want to run your power play through Kuzmenko. If he can get back to 40 goals next season, you're going to have a pretty dangerous player in your hands. Well, you have a pretty dangerous player. You could, you know, dangle to another team who really needs goal scoring. That'd be pretty sweet. But, you know, I think it's, it's kind of interesting, the discussion, like, you know, he fell out of favor in Vancouver. Why? Because he doesn't want to play like Rick talk hockey, whatever. Like he's not super attentive to detail in the D zone or in, in all three zones in general. But, you know, when you have a skilled player like that, um, why not work with him and work around him and give him the tools he needs to be the best player he can be? And we've seen the Flames kind of do the opposite of that a lot over the past five, ten years with players, kind of try to force them into being players they're not, and it never works. Yeah. Like, that play on the power play tonight is a perfect example of, like, this. how how long has this power play sucked? It's, been, it's so You can't even watch it half this year, half this year, all this year. It's well, so bad. That's the most productive, most power play production we've seen in what? Dude, 
You were just looking it up. Did you find it? The last I had to time look this scored? up because they scored three power play goals. That's unheard of this year. That's unheard of ever, really. The last time they scored three power play goals, uh, January 28th, 2020. Um, 2020. 2020 against the St. Louis Blues. They lose 5 4 in a shootout. I'm going to give you, I'm going to, who can you guess who scored the power play goals? Sean Monahan. Sean Monahan scored two of them. And Matthew Kajek? Yeah. <laughs> what do I win, Michael? Obviously, a bet no. from Betway. Let's yeah, do. Let's do right. this. Um, All right. Do we have that Kuzmenko uh, little scoring? Yeah, graphic? RJ. If you just throw that uh, from NHL Edge, it's just uh, Andre Kuzmenko's shot ch- or goal chart from from last year. Yeah, this is just from the NHL Edge tracking data. And you know what? Like, you kind of look at how he scored. I think that goal in St. Louis he scored the other night where he strips oh, the guy of the puck. Fucking nasty. Just right in tight. Looked like Pavel, a little Pavel Datsuk action right there. You know, a little Johnny Gaudreau action. Just he scores so many goals, hands. like right in, like right in that kind of inner slot. I mean, a oh lot shit, of, man! A lot Look, of good goal scorers he's, score there. He, he's got no zero, uh, zero goals from the blue line. I guess he can't man the power play after all. Eh? <laughs> he's got no bo- He's got no goals from the far left flank where he's floating in uh, softies he's, from he's, there. Eh? He's got no goals where his feet are behind the blue line. And he's yeah. just lobbing it into the goalie's chest. Damn! But you can't, just look can't at where the, the guys. Play. You look at where the guy scores, like he's super dangerous below the hash marks. And I think that's why he could work well with a guy like Nazem Kadri and a guy like Pospisil. I think something you saw tonight, the Flames do well that they've maybe kind of struggled with is, is have longer stretches of possession and extending possessions and keeping the puck in the ozone a little bit longer. So, man, if they if they can just get him rolling and get him playing with some like guys who can hold possessions and keep the puck in the zone – and he can just do his thing. If he gets the puck in tight, he's probably scoring goals. Yeah, I just I after watching those two games, like you're thinking of what do you, what's you're trying to accomplish next season. Maybe you want to get off to a hot start and make a playoff push, but more than likely, you're probably going to be sellers again. Is Kuzmenko got one year left on his deal? Yeah, he'll have one year. He'll be, he'll be yeah one year next. So year. he'll be he'll be a UFA after after next season. So. I think he's, and I think that's obviously part of the reason the Flames picked him up. They can juice his value up. Yeah. I think, yeah, you build your top line around him, go all in on Kuzmenko next season. If you don't miss the playoffs, then he becomes a first round pick. But let's talk about Marty Pospisil for a second. All right. Uh, RJ, we got to throw this up here. We got these heat maps. This was uh, Shane Flash Stevenson posted this. He's an excellent follow on Twitter. But um, these come from. These come from Hockey Viz, Mika. You're the best at explaining these. Let's go. Let's well, it's just these a shot maps. chart when he's on the ice, right? And I think that's what's been such an interesting thing about Paw game. Like, you watch him out there tonight, and he's just super effective. He doesn't really put up a lot of points. I know he gets the goal tonight, which is his on-ice impact. And overall impact on the team has just been incredibly strong this year. And I think it's pretty awesome for a guy who was a fourth-round pick and for a guy who's had his injury history. But he just adds so much to this team that they were lacking like as soon as Matthew Kachuk left really well um, in terms of his on ice impact and in terms of his personality and in terms of his shit disturbing. So take a look at that heat map. That's, that's when the possible is on the ice. And then let's compare that to without possible. <clears throat> what the Calgary offense looks like just fucking nothing there. Yeah. Not as dangerous. I mean, he's a good, he's a good player, man. He gets it. He's like good at creating turnovers. He uses body. Well, i really like him with Kadri. Fuck is he great too, eh? So it's funny because, you know, Caudry and Possible, so they come in off the roster at the start of the season. No one really, you know, maybe people had them penciled in, but no one had thought those guys penned in to make the team. They make the team. They're two of your most effective players throughout the duration of the season. And as the season goes on, yes, everybody caught, or Zari is more of an obvious, you know, game to game impact player, putting up more production points. But is possible the real dark horse here? Is he the actual secret sauce with that line of Kadri and and uh, Zari, or is it kind of like just is it both of them? Ooh, I like that secret sauce. Is possible the secret sauce? That's my question. The freaking piss missile, man. The pit, like, but like, look at those those charts, man. And then they split Zari and possible up for the you know first time this season, essentially. And he's doing what he's doing, scores a nifty goal tonight. Like, I don't know. What do you think? 
Well, I really like Zarya and Karna. I really like that line, actually. When I saw that line, I almost had a, a goddamn heart attack. I loved it so much. Sharon Govich between Zary and and uh, Coronado. You had a heart attack Thank in your you. crotch area. Yeah, you got that right. Thank you for freeing Matt Coronado. Um, I really like Zary and Coronado playing together. They had a few nice little rushes. Yeah, um, they look good. Coronado good. was all over the all over the ace tonight. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's got a little. He's got his motor going. So I like that connection. And Postus was proving he can pretty much play anywhere. So can we pull up the lineups for tonight, or do you mind? Pat Steinberg posts these before each and every game on Twitter. Um, let's just let's just go through each of these lines and pairings real quick. Um, what did you think? What do you first off? What do you think of the Huberto Backman Coleman? Uh, line as as an idea, and then what do you think? What do you think of them tonight? Yeah, I mean, they kind of just. This is kind of where they stuck Huberto last year when it was just like, what do we do with this guy? Like, put him with back then and Coleman. At least they'll drag him along for the ride. I would still like to see them like doing some experimentation with with breaking up back then and Coleman and, and Huberto. Like, we we know what that trio does. You know, it's not going to do anything fancy. You're not going to you know get much out of that more than you're already getting. So I understand where, the logic of it. It's like, where do you put Huberto if you're trying some new things up and down the lineup, but it's still like, you know, if, if we really want to get Huberto, you know, I I'd prefer to see Huberto playing with some skilled young players. Okay. So do you want to see him with, with possible Solon Zari or Coronado? Like, what sure, do you think? Why not put him with anybody? You probably yeah. want to see him get a run with Coronado. You'd like to see him play. I mean, if you Coronado's a goal scorer and Hubido is apparently a setup man. So, I mean, that on paper makes sense. Him and him and Sharon Govich, that's probably the most chemistry he's had with anybody. Oh, in absolutely. His so time here. Look, so, let's split them up. That makes sense. Eh? Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe you'd like to get a look at like a Hubido, Sharon Govich, Coronado line because, I mean, listen, like Hubido's here for a while. Can he turn himself into some sort of like Yuri Hoodler type guy who uh, ex excels with some of these young players and, 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 you know, can, can amplify their skill and, and be a presence that makes them better. That's kind of what you're hoping for at this point. So I would start tinkering with something like that. Huberto is here for a long time. Not a good time. <laughs> um, he's not here for a good time, dude. The, it's freaking blizzarded out yesterday. So he's definitely not here for a good time. And then these pairings are a little bit different too. New look, Anderson and Hanley, we are the uh, Miramanov, Shillington and Pyle. What's been your overall take on on the D pairing so far? We might have time to get into some some uh, individual defensive breakdowns, but we'll we'll see how the how the time goes. I mean, I've been impressed. I've been impressed with pretty much all of the new guys. I think Pahal is kind of like a pet favorite of mine. He's a physical defenseman. His on ice impact has been very strong. Um, and I, th I think you can say the same about Henley in his limited time and limited role. Like he's looked, they've all looked like NHL defensemen. And obviously, Amir Manav, you love the upside. Obviously, he's a bit of an adventure sometimes, pulling a little Nikita Zadorov special sometimes when he's like pulling his little pizzas right, right up the gut there every once in a while, yeah. or going on a meandering adventure. But you know, I think those are all really interesting guys you brought on board for, you know, and it added to your team, and they've been pretty solid. And uh, lastly, let's talk about um, just lastly on the roster, the Mar the choice to do with Markstrom over Wolf. I got to be honest. Every time I hear Markstrom starting, I just go, Ugh, "Why? Why?" I I guess when you pull give out him a, a win, brick, like, he's earned it. I guess when you pull out a win, but like, what are we doing here? I don't know. There hasn't really been a lot of communication on what is what is the organization, what's the what's the team, what's the roster's goal here these last you know nine ten games of the season, but. Well, I mean, we've been talking about this on our podcast is the opposite feeling. When Wolf gets the start, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm pumped. It seems like, yes, this is the future. This is the direction we're heading in. This makes sense. What do you think the tandem is going to look like next year? Like, is is Wolf going to be in the lineup? Is he going to be on the roster? Yeah, Wolf's going to be on the roster. How does that look? Is that without well, you're Marshall either going or Wolf without Marshall or you're going Wolf Ladar. And I guess if you can if you can find a trade chip, um, a trade piece for Markstrom in the offseason, then you yeah, pull the trigger. I think, I think you absolutely pull the trigger. I, I don't know. Obviously, you got to play Markstrom sometimes. Um, maybe they're just kind of getting a gauge on what his relationship is like with Wolf 
if Wolf would maybe need some support like that. But I think you absolutely trade Markstrom in the summer if you have the opportunity. But I agree. The only the only difference is when Markstrom's in net, and this is just me being a, a tank. I, I love the tank. Is like I can actually cheer for losses a little bit more. Like when Wolf's in there, I'm like I want Wolf to win, but I also like can't not cheer for the tank. You know, when Markstrom's in there, I'm like, no, oh, fuck yeah, let's lose this game. See, put Wolf in. All right, let's get to. Uh, We're gonna hit an ad break here. Hit an ad, ad break. Let's go. What are we doing here? Greta, it's our home away from home for Afterburner. We'll be there for live watch parties throughout the season. Should be your spot regardless. Before, during, and after the game, grab a cocktail, something from the menu, let the games begin, or maybe you get into the game yourself. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state-of-the-art. Load up some credits on that Greta game card of yours and get at it. Greta Calgary, located at 213 10th Avenue Southwest. Check them out online, gretabar.com. It's nearly the best time of the year. Playoff hockey is around the corner. And I'll tell you what, the Grego Resort and Casino is the place to be. Cheer on your favorite teams with us at the Stage Bar. Enjoy the big game on one of those huge screens over the bar with friends, drinks, and delicious food. Let's go visit gregoresortandcasino.ca for more information. And while I've got your attention, let me tell you about the happy hour at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Let's make the most of the day and spend your afternoons with great drinks and food. Join us at the Stage Bar and Blaze Bar and Grill for our new happy hour every day, 2 till 5. Enjoy food, drinks, all starting at 5 bucks. Make the most of your days. Visit gregoresortandcasino.ca for more information. If you're thinking of buying or selling your home in the Calgary area, there's one guy you've got to talk to. That's Derek Newman of the Derek Newman Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Buying or selling doesn't really matter. Derek does it all. He's a volunteer in the community, active in sports around the city, whether it's golf, curling, huge Flames fans. So talking sports or talking about the real estate market, definitely give him a shout. He's approachable, trustworthy, and hardworking. Also, Derek's got a pretty vast network. He's even got access to some homes often that aren't even on the market yet. And you can ask him about his complimentary home staging consultation as well. Buying or selling, call him or text him right now at 403-619-6661. Derek will make it easy for you. Get Derek and his network to work for you. That's Derek Newman. Email him at dnewman at cirrealty.ca. More post-game reaction right here. We're back on Afterburner. All right. Let's get to the game. All right. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna do a little hungry for more presented by Thordash before we chat more about the I'm game. So hungry for more. Let's do this. Hungry for more. All right. We're doing hungry for more. So this is brought to you by Thordash with restaurants, grocery, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more. Thordash has everything you need. You can get more than just food. Did you know this? You can get anything you want. You can you can not leave the house now if you wanted to. You can just get everything delivered to you. It's great. Some, yeah, okay. It's great for Oilers fans. Just, Ordering, just, just, you just yeah, sit okay. at mo- sit in your mom's basement. You're, you're all good. Just chilling in sweatpants all day. Yeah. So ordering's easy. You just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with our default contactless delivery setting. So you don't have to talk to another human being. It can be told nothing. No human contact. It's great. And this one's for Oilers fans with Double Dash on DoorDash. You can add, you can order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery without additional de- delivery fees. So you're at home, you're chilling, you want like a Wendy's Baconator deluxe combo, whatever. <laughs> you know, you don't want to leave your mom's basement. She's out, so she can't drive you to Wendy's. But you're also running low on Cheetos and G Fuel and Mountain Dew. You can get it all in one with DoorDash. Well, they delivered. Time. Listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the app and enter the code NATION25. 25% up, $10 value, zero delivery fees, first order. Use the code NATION25. I will be using that. Oh, yeah. I'm using that right after this. What are you going to order, Cheetos? No, are you kidding? All me? this Cheeto talk, you got me wanting Cheetos now. Cheeto dust, that's Oilers fans. Wipe your Cheeto dust. Do they deliver sweatpants DoorDash? Probably. Probably, by the sounds of it. I mean, you're really t- hyping them up here. Anyways, what are you hungry for more from, from the Flames? All right, we covered a bit of it. I want to. I really want to see Kuzmenko be the star of the show next season. Um, 
I don't know what line combination that looks like, but I really want him to quarterback the, the power play. And can we just fix the power play? I mean, you're watching the Kings. Power- three goals tonight. What are you talking about? It's fixed. Sure. Yes. We'll see how we'll see how uh, how that continues on. But like you're watching the Kings power play. It's so dangerous. They're going with cross ice passes. I think the last cross ice pass I saw in the power play was the Hannafin play. Was that the last one? That's the, the only one, one. That's the last one. Hannafin against the Oilers, and it's a one timer, which you never see on a Flames power play. Well, that's it's what I'm talking about. I want to see some cross ice one timers. It's forbidden to one time the puck on a Flames power play. I'm starting to feel like Kuzi might be a better playmaker than than Hubie. Dude, he's got those soft hands and tight, soft little mitts. That nice so little, that's, that that's dish what, to Chadri on the first on the first goal power play yeah, is just like that's that's into traffic. That's a precise play. That was beautiful. This guy can be a walking highlight reel. I want to see. I'm hungry for more Kuzi. Kuzi, eh? Juice that orange. Let's see. Let's have, do whatever you can to get the most out of him next season. I want to see him driving the offense all season long. Well, Ryan Huska like. Wet my appetite perfectly tonight because I've been hungry for more Connor Zary and Matt Coronado together. I thought they looked really good tonight. I think they have a little bit of chemistry. I would like to see Zary maybe get a run at center to see how that works. I, I kind of watching tonight, he kind of Sharon Govich was really good tonight too. I thought uh, his effort and his intensity and his level of play kind of brought those other two guys up too. Um, but, you know, I really want to see Zary and Coronado play, get some reps in together, see if you can build some chemistry. Because, you know what, like as, as much a, as a rebuild is about acquiring elite talent and getting young players into the lineup, it's also about building chemistry, right? You you watch Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan build yeah, big time. insane chemistry in their early years, and it paid dividends for this team for a long time. So I'm hungry for more Connor Zary and Matt Coronado. Make that the next, next on-ice bromance for the Calgary Flames. 100%. You've been you've been really advocating for more Coronado in the lineup. Every time he gets set down, you ask why. His underlyings all season long has have been one in the top. Yeah. what well, six forwards for numbers. Every time you look at his numbers, like when he got sent down the first time, it was like, oh, he needs to go get his confidence. It's like, well, he's producing scoring chances like the third highest rate on the team. So I think his confidence is pretty fucking great. I'm not too worried about that. He comes up again later in the year. Same kind of thing. Shoots a lot, creates a, some scoring chances in his limited ice time. He's been a little ineffective since his last call up, but I mean, he's been playing on the fourth line with, with Rooney and, and Greer most of the time. So I, I like right. seeing him with tonight. Had some nice rushes. The Kings, uh, a, a line out of Daryl's book looked a little dopey tonight. <laughs> Give the Flames credit. They they played as if it was a meaningful game 21. Um, I, pretty much a full 60 solid effort, I would say. Markstrom was solid. I think he just secures the win for you. That first period was juicy. Cogger scores on a sweet little dish by Kuzi. Dude. That, I, that was going to be the play of the game until friggin'. Until Kuzi outdid himself. Sets up possible. So fuck, that was sexy. That was beautiful. And I just got to mention, since you mentioned Kuzmenko again, you're hungry for more. Don't forget to use that code over at DoorDash. You download the app, Nation25, to get 25% off your first order. Sweet hit on by uh, with Kadri on Anderson. I think we have a clip of this, don't we? Dude, Kadri, you know what? Massive props to Kadri. Yes. He's been, he's been so, you know what? Just I, a consummate pro. Yeah, he's been awesome, and he doesn't have an off switch. And you know what? I know he gets a lot of shit for, you know, maybe phoning it in last year a little bit towards the end. Oh, but I mean, boy, if you really, if boy, you really, did he ever! If you really look at it in sequence, though, like, like, look at this, look at this beast. Oh, fuck yeah! Oh yeah, oh, just yeah. Run, just run him over. And that was after the cross check. Anderson cross checked uh, Pospisil, and that's a little retribution. That's Dude, what you want to see. You got Pospisil. The man is he gritty? That you throw him on a line with Kadri and he's doing that, dude. That's all we really need in Calgary. We're not, we're not uh, choosy. All we need is like play hard, <laughs> hit hard, play hard and hit harder, and we're pretty happy in the saddle. Yeah, work hard for sixty minutes. That's all we need. Bring your Put a little skill on there, and then pfft. it's fun. It's funny to watch. Like I'm watching the Leafs play, and it's like, man, they could really like Kadri. Why did they trade him? Big mistake. Um, but I was just going to say, like, I know Kadri gets a lot of shit for his kind of play down the stretch last season, but I mean, the guy got rocked by, do you remember that game in New York where he got Whoa. fucking rocked and like, there's no way he wasn't hurt on that play a little bit. He that just was come the, off. Dude, that, was, that was the biggest hit I've seen. What? Since Scott Seacons nailed career. That was fucking massive. Yeah, it was insane. His, his head just nailed the ice, man. 
and he had already played like so much hockey with the Avs. Had surgery in that summer prior. The guy wasn't healthy down the stretch, so I think he's been absolutely phenomenal pretty much the entire time he's been here. Second period, um, Coronado had some great shifts, I thought. Yeah, he had that one shift where he he makes a nice back shaking play and feeds it up to Zeri for a partial break. That was that was a really nice play, a really nice shift. They spent a lot of time in the Ozone, too. Was the Coleman a power play goal? They're all three power play goals, man. We're back, baby. We're freaking... The power play power, is so power back. QB's back. Power play's back. Season's over. Well, you know what? Let's talk about the power play just kind of in general for a minute here because I know it's been a pet peeve of ours, as it has been for every Flames fan, because it fucking sucks. How do we make this power play? Because you know what? I don't buy... I don't really buy... You saw it tonight, right? Because you hear, nah, they don't have any skill. Well, I mean, I look at it. I look at well, Kuzmenko. Yeah. That seems to be the goals. biggest debate. If you if you talk any trash about the the power play coach last year was Muller. Ugh, Muller this year. Is, don't say that name. This, this year it's Muller. Muller. This year it's Savard. If you have if you say anything online about uh, get a new power play coach, you get a lot of people pushing back that there's just no skill. But yeah, I agree with you, dude. There's you've plenty got, of skill. You, you got, got the Kuzmenko. One, 39 goals. Huberto, like, he's not what he was. He's a shell of his former self. But, I mean, up until the point he got here, I'm uh, power, total power play points in the five years prior, there was only Dreisaitl, McDavid, and McKinnon had more power play points. So you can't just tell me that, like, yeah, Huberto, like, he's just totally been space jammed and has nothing left. Uweger, yeah. fucking Uweger, dude. Mackenzie Uweger. Uweger is third in the entire league in goals. And that's only he, his second power play goal. Why is it taking him this long to try him on yeah. the top power play unit? Crazy. He's got 18 goals. Scores his 18th goal tonight. Two. Second power play goal of the year. What? Why is? Where has he been all year on PP1? Nowhere. He he leads the entire league in even strength goals. I think he's got he's got 16 and two on the power play. I mean, the next closest even strength uh, goal total from a defenseman is Harley in Dallas. But then, like, and then you've got some other nice pieces, right? Like, Sharon Govich has got a great shot. He's, he doesn't add a ton to a shot. power play Gee, other than a shot threat. Gee, I would like to see him try a one-timer across ice. What? What, kind of what are you talking about? One-timer you know is banned in the Flames power play. They're banned. We saw a lot of them in, uh, when L.A. was on the power play tonight. Fuck, did that look deadly? Just That's all they do. It. And, like, how many power, how many power play setups for the Flames – are just shots from the perimeter with no traffic in front directly at the goalie's chest. It just dies so often. I just want to see a different setup. I want to see a different setup. I want to see the patented. You have so many great one-time options. Set set Kuzmego up on the off wing. Get him dishing it across. Which which way does uh, Sharon go over shoot? He's he left, shoots left. I'd put Huberto on his off wing too and have him feeding Kuzi for it's just there's so many different options, and it just seems it seems insane to me that they're just kind of insistent on this just very static. Like there was there was two or three play. times tonight I counted that the guy on the half wall just takes the shot, and the goaltender's just like tweet. So like, what are you doing? Like, make a fucking play. Lob it in there from all over the perimeter. It's ridiculous. You're not, you're Maybe not Mark Savard is just, he's just totally on team tank. He understands the assignment for this year. Maybe it's just an inside job. He knows what he's doing. Mark Savard has been spending too much time at Oodle Noodle. Yeah. All right. So Coleman scores in the second. Dude, he's going to hit 30 goals, which is pretty impressive. What's he at now? What is that? 28? 28 you scored? Wow. That was his 28th tonight, I believe. Good for him. It's a good season. 29. 29. I hope he gets it. That's fucking awesome. He'll get it. Kopitar makes it interesting. That little Paul Hill uh, byfield one-on-one mono and mono was looked interesting for a sec. Hey, eh? did you yeah. see that? I like how Paul, I like how Paul Hill plays, man. Okay. What do we got here? This is Coleman's goal. Good play by Rass. You know what? And you know what? Rass has struggled a little bit. Nice to see him back getting some power play time. Yeah, Rass had a great game tonight. It was all over the ice. I thought he looked good. Um, that's really his game. Like I said earlier, when when the Flames, they were extending some possessions 
a little better tonight, I thought. And that's where a guy like Anderson really shines. So I thought he had a good game. Third period. Then Coleman's getting into it with uh, Kempe. Did you see this? Dude, Coleman gets Fuck. Coleman and Kadri. Is Coleman every super day. small or is Kempe huge? Because the size differential it was like. I, Lucas I, says, Is this the in the do- dome podcast, boys? Yeah. You're goddamn right, man. We're here. This is us. You can look at our, you can, what did you call it the other day? Have a face to hate. <laughs> yeah. You can either, you either like this face. You have a, you can put a, a voice to a face that you either, or a face to a voice you either hate or love. There you go. Uh, Weir get, puts a dagger in. Nice little backhand dish from your favorite Calgary flame, Hubie Dooby Doo. Nice little power play goal. All in all, entertaining game. Good game. It's nice. You know what? We love Team Tank, right? Like, uh, we're all on board with this. We want to get a really high draft pick, but it was a nice little, a nice little pause to watch the Flames play some, uh, play a really good hockey game, and you know, win a good game. It was a really uh, special teams laden game. Five on five is actually a lot closer than you might expect. Equal high danger scoring chances. The Kings, um, you know, the Kings look pretty sleepy, man. Kings look pretty sleepy. Well, First period was lost. Seven shots. Sure. It's they had seven two goals on seven shots after. Yeah, shots were minutes. like 20 to four after one. They were sleepy. Bunch of dopes over there. Just a dopey game. But that almost turned into a game from last year, eh? Where it's like the Flames outshot them by 605 and they <laughs> three to two. It was almost a it was almost a textbook last year game. What did we only allow one partial breakaway tonight? Yeah, it wasn't bad, actually. You know what? Um you can see you can see why the ki- why do the Kings play the trap? Why? I don't know. New coach? They were I playing guess. the trap. Were they playing the trap under McClellan? They were playing or? some one three one under McClellan. It's it's I don't understand. Like I was looking at their scoring leaders, like Kopitar leads them in points. The guy's fucking 36 years old. That's nuts. And they, many, they have some skill over there. Like how many know, points? Kind of, how many points? Know, like 64 or something. He's in the 60s, that's for sure. But I don't trust them to beat the Oilers in the playoffs, man. That was not an inspiring that was not an inspiring effort from them tonight. No, but you never know. And I think the more people write them off, the better chance of an upset. It's typically how it goes. So, and yeah, playoffs, well, they, better, they better pick playoffs, it up. Hey, hey, playoffs Dude. is a different beast. And those one, three, one teams in the playoffs have always bored you to death, bored you to death, but find a way. So, I don't know. We'll see. It's nice to see Campe back. Fuck, did he have a nice snipe? Eh? He can shoot. Yeah, buddy can freaking laser it. See, wouldn't you? Can you imagine Igor w- wiring one timers on the please right flank? Like, that's I, all I want to see is one timer. I don't even want to see a shot if it's not a one timer. That'd be my rule next year. You got yeah, that's else a good to lose. rule. So, Uyghur now leads the def- all defensemen in five and five goals, even strength goals. He's got 16 this year. Um, that leads all defensemen across the board, third in the league in total goals behind only Roman Yossi and. <sighs> Somebody else who I'm totally blanking on. Yossi and obviously Kel McCarr. But another good season, you know? Like another good, it's a pretty good season. And maybe we're patting these veteran guys in the back too much. Like the Flames suck. They're in 24th. Tough night for the tank. Seattle loses. Dude, Dude all, the, loses. all the bad teams lost tonight. All the bad teams lost tonight. So, I mean, inverse standings took a hit. But, I mean, you still watch some of these games and, you know, you'd like to see the Flames play that way and i think that's been the one takeaway from the season where it's like you know what they're losing games but they're and they win tonight but yep. even when they're losing games they're not really getting blown out you know you saw a few blowouts maybe near the trade deadline when everybody was shipped out but a lot of close games it's not always entertaining hockey but they're not embarrassing themselves out there and if you cannot embarrass yourself and get a sixth overall pick hey that's that's pretty fucking awesome and I mean, I think it is important for guys like Zarian Coronado to be to be seeing guys like Kadri and, and Uyghur and Coleman and those guys out there like fucking shit up and, and totally just like yeah. not they don't have dick all to play for right now, man. And they're still giving it their all. I think well, they must thing. have they must have something to play for because that was a that was a solid solid effort. Sixty minutes on home ice. What do we want to do next? Do we have uh, do we want to do some questions, topics? You guys. Anybody's listening, if you want us to discuss any specific questions, topics, where do you want us to go with Is it time for that? 
Well, I think we're going to do a quick, uh, we're going to do the road ahead here in a minute for Village Honda. Okay. I think we should probably hit a break here in a minute. Um, Three to five minutes. Here, here. Why don't we do Three this? Why don't we do this? Yeah. why don't we do this? We're going to do, we're going to do the look ahead. We're going to do the Village Honda road ahead. Okay. And then we'll, we'll come out. back. We'll come back with questions, topics. Okay. So we're going to we're going to do Village Honda look ahead. We're going to look ahead of the schedule for a sec and then we'll hit an ad break and then we'll come back with questions. How's that sound? That sounds amazing, Michael. You're so good at this. Yeah, I don't belong. We're the least professional. What are we doing here? We we're not professionals, people. Like At least you did your hair for this. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Village Honda, let's go. Village Honda road ahead. Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. There's new stock inventory on the ground. You can start your automotive adventures at Village Honda, where new vehicle pricing is MSRP. Did you know that the 2024 Honda Accord was redesigned last year, Jordan? And it was chosen sure by did. Car and sure Driver did. Magazine as the number one mid-size, mid-size sedan. You number one? SUV. Number one. Wow. One of the most reliable vehicles must be on nice the road. To be number one. <laughs> it's better than ever. Superior ride quality, reliability, impressive fuel economy, Thanks to the EXL hybrid. The Honda Civic continues to lead the way in value, reliability, and performance. The 2024 Civic received a 10 out of 10 in car and driver's comprehensive vehicle testing. And the Civic Type R and SI were ranked one and two, respectively, in the sport compact category. Village Honda has a huge selection of used vehicles, all makes, all models for all budgets. Do you think Hubie's shopping down at Village Honda? He could probably find something he likes there, eh? Guaranteed he's driving a Honda. With over 70 units on site and access to over 400 more in their dealer group, make Village Honda your one stop automotive destination in Calgary. Definitely worth the trip. Village Honda is in the Northwest Auto Mall. Okay, let's look ahead to the what do we call it? The schedule to the tankathon. To the this tank is the, schedule, uh, in, is that we're the doing. Inverse, I like what you call the inverse standings bowl. Yeah, this is pull a pinder, the inverse standings. All right, I don't know if we have it on screen, but I will pull it up here. I'm going to pull up the schedule as well. I didn't send do it to you, RJ. Do you, want so. to do, do you want to do a playoff picture and, or do you just want to go right to the bottom of the league here? Dude, we're going right to the bottom of the league. I don't care about right the to the league. League? So right to the bottom of the league. So this is actually, well, this isn't really a big game for team tank because the ducks are so far gone. The flames play the ducks on Tuesday at home. Then yeah, they no, are off the, to Winnipeg the ducks, to visit I, Sean yeah. Monahan and Tyler Toffoli on Thursday. And then, Oh fuck. We got to play the Oilers again. Oh God! Why? We got to play the Oilers on Hockey Day in Canada. Hey, dude, how do you like that? Couldn't, in, couldn't intermission, we have just intermission? Intermission. Kelly, Rudy, Flames, are, Flames are playing a great game, dude. Oh, Flames yeah. are playing a great yeah. game. Intermission. Kelly Rudy is like the Flames are playing really well, and BX is like, yeah, well, what about Drew Doughty? And then Ron McLean's like, okay, what about the Oilers? Oilers? What about the Oilers? <laughs> Pathetic. You know how? I just don't know how explicit we can get on this thing. Pathetic. I want to go. I want to go further with this with Ron. Anyways, and his I think we probably community. need to mix in at least. We can't lose to the Oilers, obviously. Oh God! Obviously, I don't know, man. Uh, I wish. I wish that last win against them, where we absolutely kicked their ass, would have been the final game of the season against them. You know what? I, think I don't. This is I, a don't good I don't. I don't have. I don't have a good feeling about it, but this it could be a good rallying. This is a game, Huska. You sure. know what? Yep. This is kind of how the Flames, this is what we used to have to root for back in the day when the Flames never made the playoffs. It was like, I will play spoiler to in the last 10 games. Just fuck them up, dude. Go to town. Well, I, wouldn't go that, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but you, you can play them hard. You can play them hard on Saturday night and beat their ass again. That'd Just be nice. don't let McDavid beat you wide, even if it and means that's a good, you know what, this is a, Here's an organizational standard. You know what? We we talk a lot. What do we, we talk a lot about this in Calgary, right? Oh, we yes. don't want we don't want to create a losing culture. Ooh, do, 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 all this shit. You know what the number one culture builder I want the Calgary Flames to have, and I think this applies to the fan base as well. There needs to be a more fuck the Oilers mentality. We're way fuck too everybody. nice. To, we respect the Oilers way too much. The, the Flames team does. The fan base is really like, oh, they're so good. No, they're not. They suck. We need to beat their ass every time we play them. Don't respect these guys. So I think this is a good I- Saturday night next week. All right, you talk good me. identity building game. For you the talked me into it. I'm all in. Let's go. Oilers let's have a, suck. Let's have a, <laughs> yeah. Let's have a re. Let's have a repeat. 
All right, right. So that's the Don't that's want. the look ahead. Hopefully, I think maybe you lose to Anaheim and in, in Winnipeg for the tank and you beat the others. Sounds good. So that's the road ahead for Village Honda. Again, Village Honda, Northwest Auto Mall. We've got everything you need. You need a car. Head down there. Great place. We're gonna <laughs> go hit an ad break now. Go on there on a Tuesday and maybe Hubert Hubert will be there shopping. Get your autographs. Are we ready for an uh, ad break? I think we're gonna hit one here. Let's hit an ad break. We are well into the winter months now, and you can feel it, can't you? That urge to get away. Maybe some beach time to warm up those bones of yours. Maybe a hockey sports kind of road trip. Well, when you pack your bags, make sure you don't forget Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross travel insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you. Visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information. Alberta Blue Cross, celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey. Hey guys, it's Pinder chatting about Charm Diamond Centers. Did you know that Charm has been Canadian owned and operated since 1972? And there's over 85 locations coast to coast to coast with Charm and their sister brands. Uh, get this now, you wanna get something custom made? How about custom ring building delivered in less than four weeks? That's unreal. That is the Charm Masterpiece program and they've got unbeatable pricing policies as well. Whether it's mine diamonds or Canadian lab grown diamonds, check them out. For more information, go to charmdiamondcenters.com. That's charmdiamondcenters.com. All right, gang, listen up. It's time to learn the pro pose. Coach? Bend and snap. Beautiful form. Nice arm extension. Facial expression. I could use some work. All right, let's see it. The pro pose. What's that guy doing? I think that's the bend and snap. That's a whole different deal. Mm. Charm, home of the pro pose. Oh! <laughs> The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon Pull Apart from Wendy's. But there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Face-Off Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know you're heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon Pull Apart and a small coffee. It's a great choice. Sign up for the Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Let's get back to the hockey talk after Burner returns. All right, let's hit some questions, shall we? I think we shall. I think we shall. Did you comb your hair over the break? Did you? <laughs> I should have mixed in a shave after. The I might have did one of those. I don't know. Mixed in a shave. Yeah, cheer that neck beard, eh? Yeah, I'm working on my neck beard after Connor. It's He's my goal. Such a good, you got to get just. I don't know. Screw your diet up. Get some more acne. That'll help. Hey, just look just like him. Grow my hair a little bit longer. Look a little homeless. Just fill in the neck beard part right here. Right there. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Let's. Yeah, we got let's lots move. of lots of draft questions here, boys. So lots I'm of draft questions. To, okay, lots of draft cool. questions. All right. It's very much all along the same vein. Who are you going to take? That type of thing. So I'm going to condense it all into this one here from Noah. Cool. Is right this on. the Tej Ginla? This is the who do you think the flame should draft? I mean, that's always a very tough question, right? And we didn't talk a lot about the draft and the draft picks and stuff tonight. Kind of wanted to focus on a nice little, nice little break from, you know, they played a good game. It was nice to see that. I don't know. It's going to really depend. It's it's a hard question, right? Where do they pick? I think that's ultimately what it's going to come down to. You're yeah. really hoping they pick. They're probably going to pick in the top ten, which is going to be huge for this organization. I know a lot of the discourse online is like, take Tiege, we need to get Tiege. I mean, I'm down with that. I think if you're picking in the top eight, though, I don't know. Well, as as of right now, tough, what? Tough he, he's he's projected to go somewhere between 12 and 16, 18. Oh, he's that... absolutely skyrocketed up the rankings the past few months. I mean, he, rightly so. He's been he great. He scores a hat trick last night in the first playoff game. Yeah, and Kelowna ends up losing that game eight to six, but – he was great. I watched him in person, man. Like he's dude, he's got, he's yeah. He's so dangerous. Here's the thing. Like I sent you this today. Um, if you look at the draft, Jerome McGinley's draft, and this is the same for every draft. 
How many times have we picked a player two spots before another team and it's we miss Kucherov and we got what you don't like Tyler Wotherspoon over over Kucherov? What's wrong? It happens every draft. And I mean, I only bring that up because it's like, is it really that risky to to lock? Like you already kind of have a really good if you look at Jerome's what he developed into at like from going from boy to man and how his game as a professional developed. If you look at other comparisons across the league, Ty Domi, Max Domi, Keith Kachuk, the Kachuk boys, it's probably a you're probably a pretty safe bet you're going to get a solid NHL player in TJ Ginla. I think that's where the biggest debate is online that I've seen in terms of who do you draft. I don't know if that's where Noah's getting at. Yeah. Um, I haven't like looked. If you're reaching for him, yeah. I haven't looked at individual um, you know, players. I know it's kind of like your, more your forte looking at these young guys. But this, this 1995 NHL entry draft, you know who went first overall? This is Jerome's uh, draft. He was drafted the Dallas 11th overall. The first overall pick. Who the fuck is Brian Burrard? Ottawa. You know who Brian Burrard is. He got his eye whacked out. Uh, <laughs> that's what he's known for. That was yeah. his claim to fame. Walking around with one eye. Wade and Redding goes to the Islanders. Aki Berg to L.A. Chad Kilger, Damian Lankow, Steve Kelly. Hey, Edmonton don't disrespect East. Damian Lankow, bro. I'm not disrespecting. He's the only guy on there that I would. I love Damian. Yeah. But Steve Kelly to Edmonton. Shane Doan, Terry Ryan, Kelly. Jerome McGillan, number 11. So, like, if – because, I mean, I think the debate right now is – if you're in the hunt, if you're in the little like pocket of where Tease is expected to go, do you even do you pick him a little earlier? Yeah, I guess I guess the the bigger debate is if you're now you're climbing down the standings and you're in the top eight, maybe it's a different story. Yeah, but I think that's generally the argument. Yeah, it's like you don't want to reach to pick him just because it would be tantalizing. I mean, it would be. Are you kidding me? Be- be amazing to have are you like well and i think there probably is probably like a bit of a uh, you know a disconnect between us who are older fans and it's like we'll be like we're drafting iggy fuck yeah who cares who else is on the board right and you know let's go exactly so i think you you would take him if if he's if you are picking you can take him if he's in the right spot and it's not a reach i think the flames would be looking for not that you'd be drafting based on position but if you are picking in the top eight or the top 10 even there's so many good defensemen who are going to be in 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 that echelon. So many good defensemen, and you know what? Like, you really need you really need two things. Teams who have won the Stanley Cup have really proven you need two things in the last probably handful of decades: as number one center and a number one defenseman. You can probably snag a potential number one defenseman if you're picking in the top top eight, top ten this year, and I think that's what the Flames. If it were me looking for one of those solid, one of those amazing young D men. And I mean, I do think there is something to getting a defense prospect earlier in kind of the rebuild cycle. They take longer to develop. You know, you can develop them a little longer. And then when you draft your forwards who usually come in and are more impactful earlier, you kind of already have a defenseman developed a little more. So if I just had to say who should the Flames draft, I wouldn't put a name on it. I would just say a defenseman, one of these stud defensemen. Or tease, or fuck it, and let's tease and let's ride, baby. Okay, if you're the Flames, what? How many? If you had to like come in with a pre game plan, how many picks down or like away from where Tej is projected to go, would you be comfortable doing? Well, One, I mean, this also depends on you know, like teams have their list, right? Like we can speculate all we want. They they know where they would take Tej. I think just from the outside looking in, you're probably like if you're. In the top eight, you probably wouldn't. Maybe once you start getting to 10, 10 11, 12. 10, 12, 11. And I mean, earlier in the season, that wouldn't even be the case. You were looking at getting him like later mid round. Um, but yeah, probably like 12, 10, 11, so 13, depends, maybe. Depends where we finish, but what we just we're just coming off a five game losing streak, so we're probably gonna win how many games in a row? No, yeah, we're probably gonna go on an absolute heater to just shoot right up the standings back into like. 15, 16, so. So we'll probably end up getting Tiege. <laughs> yeah, win games for Tiege. It's a, you know, 
You win yeah. games. Hey, the way lose. I see it is like you win, you win games. Either so way, like justify picking Tej later, or you tank and you get a, an elite, another elite player in the top eight. Fuck yeah! At this at this stage of the game, it's win win. Exactly. All right. What else we got for questions? Really curious to hear what you think of the Flames. If the Flames should prioritize what they should prioritize first this off season, like trading team. Markstrom. The whole Markstrom thing is interesting. Um, obviously, he was shopped at the deadline, and we heard plenty of rumors with – was it Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick? Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald in, in New Jersey. But after hearing post-trade uh, deadline F- Fitzgerald's comments, he was basically saying that teams were trying to exploit him. And oh my job! Oh, he was whining about the whole thing. Oh, I, I went back and I looked at what goaltenders go for in the past, and just because they're having a phenomenal season this year, I didn't want to get be exploited. So I don't know. Like this is going to be interesting to see in the off season. Do can they trade Markstrom? Can they get value back that they need? Because they need a young stud is what they need. Like you're not going to just if if you don't find. Well, a nice return in the offseason. You pretty much have to hang on until the deadline, right? I don't know. I don't think Markstrom, he doesn't fit your plans. He doesn't fit your three year long term plan. And I mean, with Wolf coming in, he might not even fit your short term plan. And I mean, it ultimately comes down to what he's going to want because he's got control over the situation. But I think that's the number one priority is I would be looking to trade Markstrom. <sighs> So you'd be fine with a Wolf Ladar tandem next season. Oh yeah. Me too. If, yeah. And the reason the reason being is not because I think we're better off. I think, like you said, Markstrom's got two years left on his deal. You're looking at a three to five year plan. So regardless, you have to recoup something. You want to recoup something for him. Ideally, you get a friggin' young stud, maybe a nice centerman or something something like that yeah. but i would i am in the same boat i feel we should be rolling we should be going all in with dustin wolf at this point there's not really much other off-season business to attend to but all right i saw a question about connor zary there and banging the zary for center all season what do you say well you know i'm a you know i want to get i want to at least get a look at it he, he played center. In Gee, but when would you ever see that, Michael? You know, in these meaningless games. That, you know, not at garbage time. I mean, that wouldn't make any sense to see every I, possible scenario. Right? I think the reason I want to see it is not just because he played in junior, played center in junior, but, and has, you know, pretty much played his entire pro career on the left wing. But I think just the fact that he's come in and he's been so good and he's been good defensively. He's just been an all around very impactful player. So if you have a player who has that skill set and has that ability, I think you'd be remiss if you didn't at least try him at center. You're going to need a strong one, two, probably three centers down the middle if you want to be successful in three to five years from now. Yeah. So, yeah, like now is a perfect time to be molding him into that position or at least find out if if he can if he can pull it off. Yeah, like Codri, you have Backlund. Those guys are old and getting older, like – I think it's a good time to t- obviously like he's not in one C. So like, where do you put him? You've got, you've got two 30 plus late 30 centermen on your team right now, but just, I'd play him there for, I don't see any reason why it hurts to get a look at him in that position down the stretch here. So yes, yeah, so I can, can keep banging the Zarya for center. Bang drum. It. Bang we'll, that let's start a drum. Baby. Let's do a drum circle. Like seriously, yeah, let's I'm, do a drum circle for all I'm, of our wishes outside the dome. I'm on board with, with current Connor for center for sure. Let's get a look at it. Okay, guys, now, there's, there's, now, a bit, there's a bit of a, uh, in, in the chat, there's a bit of a discussion of fire the coach. Oh, uh, yeah, this is my type of chat. Let's go. Right, let's let's this here go. Pretty quick here. So w- w- give me your thoughts on that, guys. What do you think? I wouldn't fire him. Like, or maybe you do. My My whole thing is if you look at what this organization, how they've handled the coaching position, my God. what how many years of you know bargain bin hunting did it take before they actually pulled their wallets out and, and brought Daryl on board? And then you finally see some success. And man, was it night and day between Warren and Daryl, hey? 
Remember Johnny was like, yeah, I got a workout plan. I got a workout plan this summer. That's new. I haven't seen one of those before. What? You didn't like handball in practice? Music? Who's got that was the member that was yeah, the, got the tunes going? Blast the tunes. We no one was tweeting about the line. Well, why, why do we suck, guys? I can't hey. figure it out. Does it have anything to do with the fact that we're just fucking goofing around in practice all the time? Don't know. So do I want them to hire new, a different coach? I do. I will I would I want them to only hire bona fide coaches for the rest of my life. That's what I would like. I'm sick of the bargain bin. We've had no we've had no success with it. Huska's like I don't know. Again though, but there's so many and I know you've been you've been banging this drum since day 1. Just give me your vision, tell me what you're doing. How does Huska fit into the vision? At least explain it to us. If you're going to stick with them, at least explain the reasoning behind it and then we can as fans can evaluate if it's actually, you know, working out. Yeah, and I mean, like, listen, like, I don't know what the debate in the chat is like, like, what, what sparked this, but I mean, like, just my impression of Huska this year has been, okay, he's done a good job with, you know, kind of calming shit down. It's, it's, it hasn't been a shit show every single game, right, every single night. That's been okay, right? He's kind of empowered some leaders to be leaders. You know, he's – and we got to probably stop comparing him to Daryl. Like, he's not – saying I'm the captain, like you're not getting the captain C fuck everyone. I'm the one in charge. So, I mean, good job there, right? He, he's done a good job empowering the leaders of this team to, and the veterans on this team to, to lead and do their job. But at the same time, like I think the on ice product has been pretty yeah. meh. That's they're, the thing, man. And I mean, listen, they lost half their team a few weeks at the trade deadline. But I mean, even before that defensively, yep. even before that, it's been a really poor defensive team this year. His adjustments haven't really worked offensively. They're really not doing anything much different than what they were doing last year. Aren't they across the board even worse defensively overall than they oh, yeah, were? Sorry, they're, offensively. Yeah. They're just, it's just kind of man. Like I don't, I don't really see, I'm not seeing the results of what I'm not seeing the results of what Husk is trying to push. Right. And I mean, I think he's probably a fine transitionary coach, but I mean, you also, you know, this, these are, these are key years right now. Yeah. So is he a developmental coach? Is he going to be somebody who's really good at that? I don't know. When you're seeing like Dryden Hunt play all the time over some of the young guys, you kind of start to wonder. I don't know. I'm not saying fire him. I think he's back next year. I wouldn't have any problem with him being back next year. But I, the one thing that's kind of funny to me is like you look how well Nashville's done with hiring Andrew Brunette, who in the summer it was like the Flames should be all over hiring Brunette. Huberto had his best season of his life under brunette he can come in and fix the power play i don't think it's coincidence that new jersey is struggling with the things they're struggling with this this year since brunette has left and nashville is an absolute wagon all of a sudden when nobody even thought they'd probably make the playoffs so you know you kind of look at it and be like yeah well there's like a guy who's a really good nhl head coach compared to kind of what we've got going on i mean listen the team's tw- the team was like 24th in the league and hasn't been very good. And they started the season piss poor. I don't think that reflects great on the coach. But I don't mind keeping him around. But I totally understand people who would be like, yeah, let's look elsewhere. Yeah. I don't necessarily think this season is a fireable no. justification. But do I want? You want to see I... progression. You want to see more next year for sure. We better see more next year. And not even in terms of like, yeah, we finish higher in the standings. But – we need to see what his vision is for the team and what impact he's having on the team. And maybe we don't see the fruits of that labor for a few years because it is a developmental stage. Um, but we'll see. Nothing about him has really like wowed me. And I think a lot of people probably feel that way. I feel that way for sure. No wowie zowie. So so who should the Flames pick up for a Rempe Luchish kind of guy? Hey, is Joachim Nordstrom still available? Is he still playing? I think, listen, like... Who can we get from the K? Just some uh, okay. washed up... Yager? One, I will say one thing about this. I do miss... I do miss having guys like Gabranson around who can take care of business when, when need be, right? Yes, but Gabranson was also a fantastic defender under Dale Sutter system. I wouldn't... Yeah. So, I yes... Think, I think we've seen the last of the Lucic's... In Calgary for a little while under Craig, at least. Thank God. Fuck. 
So nobody so, ideally. Yes, ideally nobody. Keep with the youth. Keep with the youth. That's the thing. He's going to take a – yeah, you bring another Lucic, not only does he – Arguably make your team worse when he's on the ice. Blocks young guys. Blocks young guys' development. Where are we headed? We're going, yeah, we got to just three or five years out. Let's go. Mitchell Green here says he's never watched our podcast, so he's curious about our opinion on whether we should keep Kuzmenko given his abilities to boost the power play or you're just sold on trading him. Good question. Great question. I'm not sold on trading him. If he, Depends on the player, obviously. But um, I'll keep him around. Well, I don't know. That's a great question. I think he's just an asset in your pocket, right? If somebody wants to pay for him at the deadline, then you don't say no. Like you're not going to say no. We're not trading Kuzmenko, but I think he's an interesting piece, and you still don't really know what it's going to look like. Um, but you still need good NHL players on your team, right? And you probably have enough of those guys locked up under contract. But I mean, it's his his skill set and what he can do, like. Shit, man. Even from an entertainment value perspective, if you're going through some shitty yep. years, like I want to go to the dome and still be able to see guys who can make good plays. I don't, you know. So I think there's value. It, it depends on, you know, it depends on what the market is. Probably at the trade deadline, it maybe depends what the market is. Maybe even in the summer, but I don't I think you're at that point where you're making that decision yet. I think it's still yet to be determined. I guess maybe a piggyback question off that is: Do you? Do you consider a contract extension talk with Kuzmenko? Mm, I don't know. Again, it depends. Probably depends on things next year. But I like I like the pickup. You need more guys. I I'd be looking to pick up more guys like that. Players who other teams are maybe trying to divest because they don't they're prohibitory in their cap structure, but who have a ton of upside who can either help your team or can help you gain more future assets. And so what's his age? Again? Like, he's like what is he? Twenty eight? Kuzmenko? Twenty nine? He's a bit older. So, but, but he came, he, he, well, he's this is his second NHL season. So he might have a little more shelf life on him. Yeah. He doesn't have those hard NHL miles. Yeah. But, dude, let's just, let's just keep him around and enjoy the freaking Russian, what are they called? The KGB flames right now. I'm liking this. So I don't know if that answers your question, Mitchell, but it's, it's probably to be determined, to be determined at this point. And a little bit of both for sure. Yeah. Kuzmanko's uh, 28th uh, birthday in February. Yeah. So it'll be 29 uh, next year. All right. Got God, he, God, he's been looking good. Yeah, but that's well, kind of his MO too, right? Like he's he's had these flashes where it's like, holy shit. Well, 40 goal hits. season last year, though. That's yeah. pretty consistent across the board. All right. Ken's asking. How do you feel about Savard's decision with the pee-pee? What decision? The, the decision to not change anything all season long? The decision to be keep hammering – Keep the, okay, keep Huberto, the, you're gonna get it on the high half boards. Here's what you're gonna do: load it in there, flutter one in there. Wait, wait, make sure there's no traffic though. My biggest beef has been the hesitancy to put Wigger on there. I know that I know Rasmus Anderson's skill set is something that benefits benefits a team's power play. I know what they see in Miramanov, but it just blows my fucking mind that they've waited so long and, and to put Wigger on there. The one what, top three in defensive scoring, yeah, in the league. So that's a good who, who has who has more goals? Is he tied? Is he Quinn Hughes? It's McCarr and Yossi. <laughs> yeah, Weger has as many goals as Kale <clears throat> McCarr, and you don't have him on PP1. Well, you did so tonight, he scored that was so. a good decision. Every other decision he's made this year has been probably not very good. Why don't we do what Edmonton does? I know you don't have the same personnel, but do the same setup. Try it. You have really skilled options. I just don't. Mm. I don't understand the usage of Huberto on the power play. I just really don't. Or Huberto. Period. I mean, it's... like stop this static. Like when you have skilled players, you could do what the others do, and just you know, it it becomes it becomes less set plays, and it becomes more dynamic, and it just becomes more instinct based, and you could just let the skilled players on the ice do what they can do. I don't know if the coaching staff is holding the flames back in that sense, but it sure seems like it. Well, for a uh, team stat, like where is it at in the league? The power play? Dude, it's got to be, what, 28th, 29th, something like that. Just That's just raw percentage. So you would think that as a coaching staff, if your power play is that weak sauce, you would at least start trying everything. And we just haven't seen a lot of adjustments in the setup. And, like, I don't understand. Like, you have Ovechkin here the other night. You already know what the caps are going to do. They're feeding it to Ovechkin. 
who still scores in that same spot. Like it doesn't like try the patent setup, cross eyes, one timers, one timers, one timers. I, I seriously, real question. Like, could anybody find me a clip of a flames one timer on a power play other than that Hannafin goal against Edmonton? That seems think, to that seems to be the one we've seen all season long. And I don't think you can do it. They seem one, to just. I mean, one, I, th- I think it's been a one. little bit better of late, but still. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they score three. They score three goals on it tonight. Where, but I think that was more happenstance than anything. I agree. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched any Simpsons in ages. Ooh, that's bad. Um, All right, we got, we but got I think we put fucking Uyghur on the power play both time. Jeez. Okay, there's one left, and I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, maybe you guys understand what they're saying. Oh, uh, we can, it's got something to do with uh, a McNeck beard. So. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, we, definitely know Mc, we definitely know what oh. McNeck beard's all about. Ryan. Ryan so Schnitzler. Yeah, Schnitz. When are, we, when are we getting the live acoustic version of McNeck beard on Afterburner? Will they let us do that? I, hey, I'm practicing, man. I, You're uh, just a beginner. I play. How about this? How about this? I'll life. play because I can play. I'm I'm decently experienced. You can just sing. You feel comfortable. Either way, we'll make we'll make sure we're ready for for the elimination. If you yes. don't know what the hell we're talking about, uh, if you haven't noticed, Connor McDavid has like a neck beard all the time, and it's really gross. If you haven't noticed, he's never shaved for even a commercial. Does can't even shave for a fucking commercial. Hook this man up with watch. some. Hook this man up with a Gillette sponsorship. Gillette, some Accutane, something. But um, if you yeah, want to hear the, if if you want to hear the McNeckbeard song that uh, it's in the last podcast we did, it's near the end where we started the Oilers bashing. All right, man. Any any can we, do we have any more questions or we're all good? That's it for questions. Tonight. All right, cool. Any closing awesome. thoughts on that game? There, Jordan. There, Jordo. Uh, what are we going to talk about on the next podcast? We're going to go deeper into into the new defenseman. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of showcase oh, on Mirmanov, Mirmanov, Hanley, Hanley. See how those guys are shaping up, which is actually surprising that their underlines are all looking They're pretty good, really right? nice. Yeah, very good. So that's that's nice. To, nice to see. Nice to hear. I think. Yeah, coming back to the what's the segment we did? The what we want more of? Hungry for more? More Kuzmenko? I'm, I'm hungry for more Kuzmenko, baby. Let's. Let's drive the next this bus into next season. I want to see him the focal point of the offense. Um, build that top line around him. Let him Q- QB the power play. Let's see what this guy can do. All right, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. That was really cool. That was really fun. Um, if you like our show, uh, you can download it anywhere you get podcasts. It's called the In the Dome podcast. If you don't like our show, hey, that's cool, man. Uh, um, that's good too. Um, this is really cool. Thanks to Flames Nation for letting us do this, eh? Was, Afterburner, was, we're, that's our first one ever. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Oilers suck.